Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the program Islam Explained. We are joined by our theologian, uh, Omar Ergi. Welcome to the program. Thank you, you Aisel. It's good to be here. It's always a pleasure having you here. Now, we've decided to continue with our series of the Companions of the Prophet, and in particular, we've chosen Umar ibn al-Khattab. So that'll be an interesting topic to cover. Yes, hopefully. yes, indeed, indeed. And are we going to look at the periods of his life? That's we? right. What I was actually thinking, maybe uh, we could start off by looking at um, his conversion to Islam. Yes, yes. I'd like to say this first. Uh, Omar ibn al-Hattab is a very significant character within the history of Islam, as you know. Uh, he was one of the Khulafai Rashidin, uh, rightly guided uh, caliphs. And of course, everything that he did is quite interesting. Even his conversion, as you know, at the early periods of Islam, uh, when the followers of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was quite you know insignificant in numbers, and they needed a, a powerful man to support them in those earlier days. And at that time, Omar was uh, with the group of polytheists, you know, idol worshippers in Mecca, who were constantly provoked provoking him against Prophet Muhammad and uh, as you know Omar is very interesting character uh, very strong character both physically and in character too mm -hmm. and a lot of people fear them as well That's as right. you know and in during one of these provocations uh, he decided made up his mind to kill the Prophet he actually left and he was looking for the Prophet because he wanted to assass assassinate him and according to their views, get rid of the problem, you know. And, and that's because Islam was growing and yes, they wanted to stop it. Yes, yes, and, and, and polytheists didn't like that. Because, because of, of their it. forefathers, they worshipped yes, the idols. Yes. So when Omar left uh, for the Prophet, on the way, as you know, he was very angry, he had his sword on, uh, he ran into this man called Nu'aym uh, ibn Abdullah. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, Omar, what is this fury? Where are you going? And he said, I'm going to finish this once and for all. You know, I'm going to kill uh, Muhammad, uh, uh, And he said, before you do that, maybe you should go and check up on your own sister, Fatima, mm. and her husband. They have already converted to Islam. And uh, Omar hit the roof when he heard about this, mm. because he didn't know. So he rushed to his sister's house. As you know, it's a very interesting story. And when he walked in, his sister was sitting down uh, with her husband, uh, Said bin Zaid, and they were reciting the Quran. And as you know, there was another third person. That's there. right, that was uh, hiding as soon as he heard uh, Omar coming yes, in. Habbab bin Arat, you know, right. who was a slave at that uh, time. Uh, he hid behind the curtains there. And uh, he was the person, you know, each time a revelation came down, he would go to their house and they would study it together. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So Omar, as he walked in, without even listening to them, uh, he hit Said first. And then when he, his sister tried to prevent him from you know, attacking her husband, he smacked her across the mouth as well with the back of his hand. And she started bleeding. And uh, the compassionate side of Omar took over. He felt very bad. And then he sat down, he, he explained that he was sorry. And then he said, what were you reading? You know, I like to hear those words. And they said, you have to take a full ablution first in order to touch these, you know, read these. Which he did, he complied. And then they sat down, he listened to the Quran. And as you know, Quran is magical. You know, it's the word yeah. of Allah. It affects all hearts. And after that, something changed in Umar straight away. He came out of the house with a different intention now. As he head towards uh, the house of Arkham bin Abi Arkham, as you know, that's where the Prophet used to gather in secret with the Muslims and teach them. Yeah. Yeah, teach them. Yeah. So he went there as a different man. He knocked on the door. First, they were in fear. They said, you know, is, did Omar come here to cause trouble? Hamza was ready as well. That's right, the door. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as he walked in, the noble Prophet والسلام, saw the nur shining on his face. And he embraced Islam there, right there and then. And then, uh, according to scholars, uh, Omar was the 40th person to embrace Islam, which gave great strength to Muslims, as you know, in, in Mecca. Mm -hmm. Everything began to change after that. And, of course, with the conversion of uh, Omar, Meccan Muslims uh, felt that, you know, 
we are able to now go out and uh, express Islam openly to other people as well, in which they did. And of course, another period began after that, a special unique period. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just uh, if I may add, just before we continue on, um, there was also a special supplication the Prophet had made for yes. Omar as well. Yes, one of the two Omars. One of the two Omars. He said, Ya Rabbi, you know, strengthen Islam with one of the two Omars. And one of them is Amr, as you know, Abu Jahil. Yes. Abu Jahil. And of course, uh, Omar had the liaqat, which we call. And Allah planted the nur of Iman into his heart. Yes. yes. Now, I'd like to also ask, uh, basically, um, his time with the Prophet, uh, um, you know, serving the Prophet as well. So, mm -hmm. another era yeah. um, after course, that. There is a special era too, isn't it? Omar as a Sahabi next to the Prophet. It's a special era as well. Now, as you know, with Omar radiallahu anh, he was uh, such a consistent, devoted man. Because earlier in his life, they say that he was such a stubborn man That's right. that he would even wrestle camels down. Mm. A very interesting character. And, and people would fear him. Uh, as you know, uh, in small numbers, in minority, Muslims in Mecca, you know, faced a lot of oppression, harassment, tortures. The weaker one, you know, were tortured. Some people were killed mm. just because of their beliefs, as you know. And, and when the noble Prophet, wasalam, received the revelation to migrate, because that was the only option then left. As you know, being the uh, prophet of compassion, he wanted to make sure that all of his followers, Ummah, left Mecca before himself. Mm -hmm. He remained back, because he wanted to see them safe. So people in large groups began to you know, flee Mecca. Yeah. in the middle of the night most of them when the you know idol worships did not see them you know but omar was a different character that's right yeah. so he said omar is not gonna run away in the middle of night you know like a coward it's, he had a different character that was his understanding mm. so he mounted his horse in the middle of the day yeah, yeah. you know it was midday mm -hmm. the sun was right on its zenith and he rode his horse next to Mecca, going through the streets of uh, Mecca, sorry, next to Kaaba. And there was a group of thugs there, waiting, with their swords and spears, ready to kill any Muslim, you know, that they come across. Omar stood right next to them on his horse, and he turned to them and he said, if any of you like to make martyr, uh, <coughs> widows out of your wives and orphans out of your children, you can follow me. Mm. And it's basically expressed to them that he is leaving, yeah, migrating to Medina. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. So he challenged them and just by himself he left Mecca. And they were too scared to even do anything there. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. this was Omar. That's it's right. a different character. <coughs> and as you know, uh, from there on, Omar was always next to the Noble Prophet Ali Wasallam. In fact, the, uh, the Noble Prophet has a number of sayings about him. And one of them is, if there was to be a prophet after me, it would have been Omar, according to one narration. Mm -hmm. On another narration, it's reported that it's Abu Bakr as well. So those two was special. One of them was on his right, the other one was on his left, mm -hmm. throughout his life. But there is a very interesting uh, incident about Omar also. As you know, he was given the title of <coughs> Omar al-Faruq, the differentiator between Haq and Batil. Mm -hmm. You know, between the truth and falsehood. And in, in Medina, one day the noble Prophet is sit, sitting with a group of Sahaba, his companions, and he mentions what will happen in the near future. And as you know, the Sahaba are, you know, special people. You know, everything that comes out of that beautiful mouth, they take it straight away very seriously. And the noble prophet said, you know, in the near future, there will be a conflict amongst Muslims, fitna. Mm. And Muslims will fight each other. Upon hearing this, the, the, the Sahabi was very worried and concerned. And they said, when will that happen, O Messenger of Allah? At that point, the prophet turned across and there was a man walking across the street, a great tall man, you know, over two meters high. Yeah. with shoulders they express as you know wider than one meter mm. and he said do not worry for as long as that man is alive there will be no fitna 
and that was Omar. And that was Omar ibn al-Hattab. So it's very interesting. And as you know, throughout the battles of the Prophet, throughout the struggles of the Prophet, you know, within Mecca and then in Medina, Omar was always next to him. So that was an interesting period of Omar as well. And then, of course, there is a very significant period when he was the Khalifa of Islam. Yeah. And he was the second Khalifa of Islam. Yeah. So if we, want to, if we could just talk a bit about his Khalifa um, period as well. Mm. Um, you know, what, what he endured, what he um, came across and mm -hmm. what happened during that time. Yeah. As, as you, know, you know, with Omar, uh, we expressed this a number of times. He was a very, you know, uh, stern man and, and people used to fear him a lot. In particular, you know, when Abu Bakr passed away, may Allah be pleased with him always, and when Omar was to be Khalifa, the people feared, you know, they said, you know, Omar is a very harsh man, you know, how is he going to be it? <laughs> they knew his character. But very interestingly, you know, taking on that duty, it's a very heavy burden. Omar was so sensitive with justice in, in particular, uh, that they say that he, he would, you know, seek refuge in Allah even if someone stepped on an ant mm. on the streets of Medina. It was that, that, that sensitive about justice. Mm. And when we look at his life, you know, what sort of an understanding he had towards justice and applying the law, you know, laws of Islam, we see very interesting periods, very interesting stories as well throughout his life. And, and for example, we can maybe touch up on a few of them. You know, in, in relations to this. Uh, one day, uh, Omar radiallahu an, as he walks up the steps of Mimbar to deliver a khutbah, suddenly he remembers an incident that occurred on top of Mount Uhud during the Battle of Uhud. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, that there was a brief period of time when the Muslims were defeated during and the retreat. Yeah, and they okay. retreated towards the mountain. <laughs> And on top of the mountain, right on top, there was an instant when the Prophet ﷺ stood with uh, the four of his you know, main companions, or we should say the Khulafai Rashidin, to be. Mm -hmm. So there was Abu Bakr there, Umar there, uh, Osman and Ali there, right next to him. And at that point, an earthquake occurred and the mountain started trembling, shaking. The noble Prophet pointed his finger at Mount Uhud and he said, stay where you are, O mountain. And when he speaks, no matter what he speaks to, they will re respond. He is the Prophet of Allah, Habib Allah, yeah. you know. And then he said these very famous words, according to narration. He said, for there is a Rasul on top of you, mm -hmm. a Siddiq on top of you, and three martyrs. It's very interesting, and they're all alive at that point. Now, Omar remembered this incident when he was a Khalifa, when he was on the khutbah, and he said, well, the Rasul is himself, the noble Prophet Abu Bakr, as we know, is the Siddiq. Mm -hmm. That lives free people, and one of them is me. Martyrdom, you know. Can I be one of those martyrs if the Prophet said so? And, he said, and then he said, who am I and who is martyrdom? Omar, you know, and as you know, with Omar, he was also very sensitive about establishing a balance, a balance between fear and hope, which we call khawf and raja. And at the time of the Prophet, I'm going back to this, yeah, that's right, that's because okay, this is yeah. very interesting. That's right. Uh, as you know, Prophet had a person who would, who he would share his secrets, and it was Hudafa. Yes. Now Hudafa would never tell anyone. So the Prophet would share it only with him. And one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet all the names of the Munafiqs, hypocrites in Medina, <clears throat> as a list. Yes. And he only shared it with Huzafa. And Omar found out about this. After that point on, he would, you know, follow Huzafa step by step. This was when there were, um, when those Munafiqs or the hypocrites would die, he wouldn't pray there. Yes, um, exactly. He exactly. just leave, and yes. that's where he understood yes. that there were the hypocrites. You remembered well, yes. So, as Hudafa, Omar would watch from a, a distance. If he stood for the prayer of the Janaza, the funeral prayer, he would stood, stand to. If Hudafa slowly walked away, 
on my route walk away too. So one day, there was a janaza again, funeral again, and it was the funeral prayer of a man whom the Medinians referred to as the bird of the masjid. He was always in the masjid. Yes, yeah. he was always in the mosque. Very interesting. Yeah. And as the you know, jama'at, the congregation, stood for the prayer, Kuzafa slowly left. Mm. Omar was in shock. He followed him and he caught him in one of the streets of Medina. And he grabbed him. He said, Oh, Hudafa, please tell me, was this man a munafiq too? Was he a hypocrite too? And Hudafa said, Just leave me alone, Omar. And then Omar said, For the love of Allah, please tell me. You know? And he said, Yes, he was on the list too. He was a hypocrite too. The two meter tall men fell to his knees. Mm. He grabbed Hudafa from his garment and said, for the sake of Allah, tell me, am I on that list too? It's very interesting because, as you know, Omar was one of the Ash'ari Mubashshari. And, and still he was in fear. Yeah, ten people who was given the glad tidings of entering Jannah, paradise, and he's still worried. And he said, you know, am I on that list? And as you know, famously, Hudafa said, Ya Omar, may Allah never take you away from the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad yeah. Now, this is the character of uh, Umar. And at the end of his days, when he was praying at the masjid one night, uh, a Majusi, as you know, fire worshiper, walks in and stabs Omar while, he, while he's praying. And one scholar explains his intestines were coming out of his body. You know? yeah. And, and this, this particular scholar says, I would kiss those intestines. Omar grabbed them and straight away, what, what was he thinking about? Justice. He said, why would they want to do this to me? Have I been unfair to anyone? Go out there and find out who did this. Mm. And when people stepped out, the streets of Medina was crying with wells. Yeah. They were saying, oh, wow, oh, wow, Omar. Don't leave us, Omar. Everyone was crying. And they came back and explained to him that he was a fire worshipper. And he said, Alhamdulillah. And then he said, I got one more request. Can you go to our mother Aisha, mm -hmm. where the Prophet lies there in Hujrayi Sa'adat? Right next to him, there's Abu Bakr, his beloved Siddiq, right yeah. next to him lying. He said, there is only one more spot left there. Would she allow me to be buried in that spot? So they went and spoke to our mother, Aisha. She said, I had reserved that spot for myself, but I prefer Omar's nefs to my own nefs. So when they came back, they explained to Omar, he's still lying there, holding his guts. And then he said, after hearing this, I can die comfortable. Alhamdulillah. And Yes, there are so many stories about Omar's life, but these were very, I found these very interesting. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if we were to talk about everything, I mean, we'd be here for hours yeah. on end. Yeah. <laughs> but but in that. regards to maybe one last thing, in regards to, there is this <laughs> narration, it's very interesting, in regards to Omar's justice, a sense of justice. They say that in the banks of uh, River Eurofetus, some years later, during mm. the Omar's time, you know, this shepherd, you know, he has a big herd and he is, you know, pushing them through the next to the banks of the river. He sits in one corner and at that point, this wolf attacks the herd and kills one of the sheep. And the shepherd sits down and starts crying, weeping, you know. Mm. A man passing by and says, what's wrong? Why are you crying so loudly? And the shepherd says, you know, the wolf took one of my sheep and he says, it's only a sheep. You know, there's no need for you to cry over it this much. Yeah. He says, it's not that. Then what is it? Umar has passed away, he said. How would you know this, you know, all the way from here? He says, because when he was alive, even wolves would not attack the sheep. Wow. Justice of Umar, wow. radiallahu anh. May Allah be pleased with him for eternity, mm -hmm. inshallah. Yeah. Brother Umar, that was an exceptional talk about uh, Hazrat Umar. Um, 
I do hope we could continue with our series on the Companions of the Prophet. Inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, I'd like to thank our viewers um, on Islam Explained. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum.